Hi, do you want to learn about equilibriums of assets and bases but only have 10 minutes to your exam? Well, this is the video for you. To start, let's define equilibrium. In chemical systems, equilibrium occurs when the rates of both the forward and reverse reaction are equal, leading to the same concentrations of reactions for products and reactants over time. That last part there is called the dynamic equilibrium, and it essentially means that at the molecular level, the reactions are still happening, yet there is no net change of concentration regarding the substances involved. Think of it like this. Imagine there is a busy intersection with cars moving in and out, yet the numbers of cars on each side stays the same. That's dynamic equilibrium. Next, we need to be able to find and write chemical equations for equilibrium systems. For reactions that have reached equilibrium, you can use this symbol. This symbol indicates that both forward and reverse reactions are happening. In this equation, the nitrogen gas reacts with the hydrogen gas to form ammonia, which can decompose back into the hydrogen and nitrogen gases. Next up, we look at this man and his incredible mustache. This is none other than Le Chatelier, and we'll be talking about his principle. His principle is a very useful method for predicting the behavior of equilibrium systems. It states that if something has reached equilibrium and it gets disrupted by changing temperature, pressure, volume, or concentration, the system will shift its equilibrium position to counteract the disturbance. A few examples could be this. Adding more reactant to the system will shift the equilibrium towards the products to consume the added reactant. Exothermic reactions increase the temperature. This shifts the equilibrium to the reactants due to it trying to consume the heat. In contrast, endothermic reactions that decrease the temperature will shift it to the products. Essentially, the equilibrium will shift to either side to attempt to keep the equilibrium going. Also, I should probably mention the equilibrium constant, which is this. It tells us the ratio of concentrations of products to reactants at a specific temperature. A Kc value over 1 indicates it favors the products, whereas a Kc under 1 indicates it favors the reactants. Now we're going to move a little closer to the acid-base part. Bronsted and Lowry both came up with a theory for defining acids and bases. Acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Think of it like acids and bases are playing baseball, and the acids are the pitchers and the bases are the catchers. For example, HA plus B turns into A minus plus HB plus. The baseball, hydrogen, is thrown and caught by the catcher. The pitcher no longer has the ball, but the catcher does. An actual example could be hydrogen chloride plus water turns into hydronium plus chlorine minus. In this, the hydrogen chloride is the proton donor, or the pitcher, and the H2O is the proton acceptor, or the catcher. In bronsted lowry equations, we can find the conjugate acid-base pairs. A conjugate acid-base pair can be summed up to this. Acid donates proton, becomes base. Base accepts proton, becomes acid. In that same equation we did earlier, I can show an example. Hydrogen chloride, the acid, becomes a base, chlorine. On the other side, water, which in this case is a base, becomes an acid, hydronium. Despite this, some substances can actually act as both. These are called amphiprotic substances, water itself being an example. Water can act as an acid in the presence of a strong base, and can act as a base in the presence of a stronger acid. Buffers are solutions that fight back against the changes in pH when smaller amounts of weaker acids or bases are added. Lots of chemical reactions will only happen at specific pHs, so it is very important that their acid concentrations stay mostly constant. It's useful in quite a few things, namely biochemical processes. The pH of blood has to stay somewhere around 7.4 pH in order for it to carry oxygen. The body undergoes quite a few reactions that produce acids and bases, so buffers are very important. Next are titration curves. The ability to analyze them helps us to understand the pH changes during the titration of acids and bases. A titration curve is a plotted point with pH versus the volume of the titrant added. For monoprotic bases and acids, mono meaning it donates one proton, the curve shows a single steep rise to the equivalence point. For polyprotic bases and acids, donates more than one proton, the curve will have multiple equivalence points. Now we look at pH and pOH. In case you didn't know anything about pH and pOH, pH measures the amount of hydrogen in a solution, and pOH measures the amount of hydroxide in a solution. In total, pH plus pOH will always equate to 14. So if you know one, you will always know the other. Now, if you want to find the pH of something, use this formula. It's the same for pOH. Now we will define these constants. Kw is the water ionization constant. K is the acid dissociation constant, and Kb is the base dissociation constant. Kw equals 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius, quantifying the product of hydronium and hydroxide ions in water. Ka measures an acid's ability to donate protons. This is calculated from its association into H plus and its conjugate base. Ke is essentially the same thing with bases. It dissociates into hydroxide and is able to quantify a base's ability to accept electrons. There is also a connection between the three. Think of it like this. Ka and Kb are two sides of a scale, where Ka measures an acid's ability to donate protons, and Kb measures a base's ability to accept electrons. The Kw is almost like a total weight limit on the scale, that number still being the same constant they had earlier. For example, acetic acid. Its known dissociation constant is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Its conjugate base is 5.56 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Here they are both on the scale. When you multiply them together, you reach that same constant as earlier. Essentially, Ka times Kb has to equal this constant, otherwise you did something wrong. 